All right, we are on. Uh, this is the Deerfield Conservation Commission, January 28th, 2016. Um, we have a rather full agenda in front of us tonight, so we'll start right up. And let's see who's coming through the door. Is this someone from NEE? New England Environmental, right? Nope. Okay. Berkshire Design. Berkshire Design. Then we are going to start off. We have an RDA submitted to the CONCOM, a Raymond Financial, for an addition to their building on Route 5 and 10. If you'd like to come up and make your presentation, we'll take a listen to it. Sure. And you all have copies of the proposal site plan? Yep. Okay, I have another copy here. So we're proposing, excuse me. We're proposing to build an addition that's 16 feet by Could 24 you feet. Tell us your name. Oh, hi. I'm Anna Cook from Integrity Development and Construction. Thank you. So we're looking to build an addition that's 16 feet by 24 feet. The existing building is existing non-conforming in terms of the front setback. Um, in order to build the addition and not make the building more non-conforming, we need to shift it to the rear a little bit. Um, which still conforms with the rear setback, it does put us in the wetlands buffer zone. We're looking to take over about four and a half feet towards the rear of uh, existing green space. It'll become part of the addition, but we're gonna convert um, a bunch of paved area back into grass. So it's approximately 35 square feet that we're taking over and we're giving back about 400 square feet, maybe a little bit more. So there'll be a net gain of 400 feet of pervious surface. Something like that, yeah. Or a loss of 400 feet approximately of impervious. Of impervious, correct. That's correct, that's basically the gist of it. We do propose uh, putting up a silt fence. Mm -hmm. so we're gonna use pretty Standard silt fence, stakes, netting. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll check, make sure that nothing's either, if it's, um, if it's knocked over or breaks down from weather or just from vehicles. We'll, we'll be looking at it daily, make sure it's kept up in good shape. Well, we did a site visit out there this afternoon. We're all familiar with, uh, oh, before we go any further, I do want to, um, put on the record that I am a client of Raymond Financial Services. However, I do not believe that it will impact, and actually the way the market's going, Charlie, I should be kind of <laughs> irritated at you, but that's another story for another day. But it, I, do, I don't feel that there's any conflict of interest here, and, but on the other hand, if there's anybody in the audience or in the board feels that I should recuse myself, I would not take offense, nor would I be offended. So, perhaps insulted, no. but other than that. So, that being on the record, <clears throat> I would say that uh, we have, for our determinations, I'm suggesting to the board, perhaps, that a negative number three the work described in the in the request is within the buffer zone as defined in the regulations, but will not alter an area subject to protection under the Act. Therefore, said work does not require the filing of a notice of intent subject to the following conditions. And we would make those conditions that they would install siltation fencing, uh, remove the, uh, make the adjustments to the parking lot, according to the plans submitted by, uh, let's see, we have Randall E. Iser has put his stamp on it from the common for the, these plans, page one. So that would be my motion. Do I have a second? Second. Aye. Aye. Three. Okay. Voting. Ben? Yes. Lou? Yes. Brian? And I would also go with the negative number three.
siltation fences stay up until that area is is revegetated. Correct. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, okay. then we are good to go. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're all set, Charlie. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, board. Thank you for stopping today. Appreciate the quick turnaround. We're from the government, Charlie. We're here to help you. <laughs> all right, one down. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, you'll find it. Ah, for your company. Thank you. All right. Next up on our agenda, we have a request for determination that was submitted by Robert G. and Mark R. Penfield to determine whether work to repair a septic system on property identified as 705 Greenfield Road is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, we did the site visit this afternoon. They have a failed system. Uh, they did submit a plan. If you want to look at this one. To repair said system, actually replace said system. about that people so basically and I talked to the building inspector all who's also obviously the Board of Health agent and he's got no problem with it he wants it fixed he's inspected the plans he's looked at them he's said they're good to go there is a wetlands issue down below the on the base of that hill as we saw today however they're proposing to put in the, the erosion control from the edge of the house to the edge of the property. Um, it's a good plan. It takes a failed system, brings it back up to code. And again, I would make a motion that we do issue a negative determination <coughs> of negative three, subject to the plans, uh, let's see, dated January 4th, 2016 by McClay Engineering. All second. Brian. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Aye. All right. We are moving along. Uh, to figure out how to fold these now. It's just like this. <laughs> yeah, it had to make me look bad, didn't you, Brian? <laughs> it took me a few minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Lou. Okay. <laughs> All right, a negative number three it is, subject to the plans. Is that date again? Thank you. All right. Is anyone here from New England Environmental? 
Uh, no, uh, Kevin couldn't make it, but I, uh, I'm here to represent the project. So you would be from New England Environmental? I am not. I'm with Girl of Your Solar M&W Group, or the general contractor. Oh, okay. If you'd like to come on up. Sure. Sure if you guys have a copy of this. We've got this. Gotcha. Oh, <coughs> yeah. And what was your name again? I'm sorry, I'm Nate Malo with M and W Group. That's M A L O. So these are the plans that you you sent down to DEP. Or New England Environmental sent down to DEP uh, in this Springfield. Is, this is the proposed plan that was yep. submitted by New England Environmental yep. to the town. Okay, it, uh, then it was also forwarded to DEP. Okay, so we're because they they have reviewed these and they don't. As of this afternoon, they don't feel that these changes warrant any action on our part beyond a letter telling you that yes, we're good to go with these changes as submitted. Okay. But when it comes time to to ask for a certificate of compliance, mm -hmm. that what we have is, before we issue the certificate, is a set of as-built plans submitted sure. to the CONCOM and to the DEP for our permanent record. So we have something that says, okay, we started off with A, we moved to B because once we get out on the site and found that it was a little more difficult to work it after, and that's how I understand it from Mickey and from uh, Kevin. Yeah. That once you started clearing the land, it became a little more difficult to work than initially thought. Sure. And these yeah. changes, I'm actually moving away from the wetlands, so exactly. they're by and large. There are uh, <coughs> a few things here that are, are uh, resulting in our request. So um, you'll notice here, I think this was an area of concern through permitting. Um, these are some of the steeper grades on the site. Mm -hmm. Travel down towards the, the, the rail line here. Um, so what we're hoping to do is pull the modules off of that to minimize the chance of any kind of stormwater event um, or, or runoff here. Um, we also, you'll notice, uh, are looking for use of a larger part of the southern portion of the site. Um, so on this portion, uh, there was topography that looked like it would be problematic. Um, once we got into engineering, uh, we were able, we decided that through value engineering it, that it would make sense to do some um, grading of these contours to make them more amenable to installation. Um, on this side, uh, there was a discrepancy of uh, between the Alta survey that was provided to the, the developer when the, the transmission easement was put in here. Um, originally, this, the, the Alta survey looked as though the easement was 350 feet wide. It actually turns out that the easement's only 250 feet wide. So when they did the, um, the verification in the field, they realized that there was this 100 foot difference between the two. So um, all of this area, shaded in purple here, is area that was previously approved mm -hmm. as shade management. Um, so it, it was subject to, to be cut, but only for the purpose of minimizing shade back north onto the project. Um, so now we're basically just asking instead of just cutting and stumping the area that we do use uh, part of this area as module installation. Any questions, Ben? No, I think I'm about all set. So you're saying you're cutting more trees now in this whole area? Uh, no. So we're, we're going to be stumping more trees. But we, uh, the way that I understood it, and um, I'm kind of coming in just reading permits and whatnot, but um, the way that I understood it is that this area was always approved for cutting. Uh, it just was once you cut it, you have to leave the stumps. There wasn't really any limitation, as far as I could tell, as for how much we cut of this area. It was just once it was cut, you don't stump it. So now we'd be asking for permission to stump um, and do some uh, 
minor grading or kind of smooth out the contours in this area uh, to make it more amenable for the solar installation. So the area where you do see these blue squares here would be part of the installation. And so that's, that's the only place you're going to be stumping is that a little addition here. Correct. We would leave the stumps in the, the in there. And you'll still have some screening from Keats Road. Correct. Shield. Yeah. Yep. No, that, none of that would, would change. Uh, we're still adhering to the 100-foot setback from the property line. Mm -hmm. um, we're still adhering to the 25-foot no-touch zones from all of the, the wetland resource areas. Well, like I say, this has all been looked at by DEP also. So that, uh, and according to Mark Stinson, that his suggestion was that we issue a letter to Lake Street Development, NEE, and M&W Group saying that the changes submitted on these plans will reference dates, et cetera. We have dates on this? Yeah, there should be a revision. Hey, I'm 63 years old. <laughs> no, it's, it's tough for me to see. It's uh, January 8th, 2016. Yeah. So I would ask if you, what, you Brian, do you have any questions? The or? calculations are all good for the added solar panels, and they were happy with that. DEP had no problem yeah. with They felt that the changes were not significant enough to set, put out an amended order of conditions, that they were more minor and fought, fell into something that we could approve sitting here at our meeting with a letter. But at the end of the, the day, when they come in for a certificate of compliance, they have to – We were, you, don't, you don't get your certificate. certificate without submitting a set of as-built plans to us and DEP. Sure, that's no so, problem. Which is not a, I would not think would be a big deal. No. We, most of the, the owners that, that we built for would want that anyway for their records. So mm -hmm. That's kind of standard procedure. So it would be getting as-built with a stamp on it and everything. Correct. Yep. So at this point, I would make a motion that we accept the changes as submitted based and with the letter. I'll have to sell a copy everybody at the letter before it goes out so everybody can see it and make sure they're happy with it. And um, do I have a second? Second. Yes. Aye. Yep. Sounds Aye. good. Okay. Aye. All right. Excellent. Can we Thank keep you. this? Absolutely. It's All large. right. Yeah, a little uh, larger. It's a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually read this one a little bit. Put <laughs> these on. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. We'll uh, send that to Mickey or Kevin. Yeah. We'll get a copy out to everybody. Great. Thank you. Thanks again. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. All right. Next up on our agenda is we have a notice of intent for a solar array on Keats and Jingle Hill Road to be installed for Eagle Brook School. Now again, I'm going to make another that my son's in-laws both work at Eagle Brook School. So if there's anybody who feels that I would be Unable to be, I feel that I can be um, reasonable and not be influenced. Impartial. Not to say anything. <laughs> You're an awful person. <laughs> so I would put that on the record that uh, I do not feel there would be a conflict of in interest there. And uh, would ask anybody, if you're here representing Eagle Brook. I'm with Eagle Brook. <laughs> Uh, easiest to stand right here with, I got a bunch of boards, which is probably the easiest yeah. thing to do, and I can put them up on a chair if that works. That'll work, sure. Whatever works. Yep. And we do have a file number that was issued today. Did you get that? I did get that. Okay. Yep. So, Jeff Squire with Berkshire Design Group. I'm here about Eagle Brook. I'm Wes Smith with Eagle Brook School. Um, so, similar to the last project you were looking at, we're uh, proposing a, a small solar array um, in this portion of Eagle Brook land. So just to orient you, 
um, Rice's Ferry Road, or not, uh, Pine Nook Road here, Eagle Brook Campus, the main campus is over here. Um, north is, is to your left. So this is way out at the end of this parcel, um, which is part of a larger, roughly 60 acre parcel that's carved out over there. Mm -hmm. Which this is Keats Road. Right, and this is, and then this is Keats Road. Right yep. Um, so they're, they're, um, the school is looking to, like a lot of other people, you know, convert a lot of their um, electrical demand to, to solar and are trying to take advantage of some opportunities they've got on campus. Um, one, the new uh, sand building, the new um, science, music, and arts building is going to have uh, roof mounted. They're going to have some, you know, solar and some other cleared areas, but this area was particularly attractive because it's, you know, currently um, it's an unused or, um, you know, vacant field um, and the work there was was um, you know conducive to to solar array so this is a, just a blow up of that uh, that parcel again north is is up in this case this is Keats Road here um, so it's this it's this field that we're primarily focused at uh, focused on um, Jingle Hill Road is a small gravel turnaround there's some stockpile materials and stuff back there um, resource area wise there's a uh, bordering vegetated wetland down here, so, and, and an intermittent stream further to the west, uh, but really the DVW here, and there's a small uh, wetland system there that's probably about 20,000 square feet, and you can touch on that. I spoke with Mark yesterday also. And, um, so the proposal um, has changed actually a little bit since the original submission. Um, I did send a plan, I think, I forward a copy to you as well, Steve, but the, um, so this was, this is what was submitted, um, you know, taking advantage of as much of that field area as we could. Um, we were under the um, impression that we had to respect a hundred foot setback from Keats Road, but also Jingle Hill Road, which we have subsequently found out it was discontinued. Um, in 2000, so that setback, that 100 foot setback, doesn't apply along that um, stretch of the property now. Um, I just confirm that with the zoning enforcement officer today. Yeah. I talked to Dick because we looked at this last week when I was talking to Dick, and it was like, well, do setbacks for a discontinued county road, do our setbacks apply? And he feels they do not. Right. So their property line actually extends, you know, over to this line here. So now that that's discontinued, you know, this is actually all Eagle Brook property now. Um, so subsequently, what we've done is, um, and I've got this provision I supported, supported to Mark Stinson. Um, as well, as we took all that. Uh, all those modules that were posed in that area, which was really where the majority of the tree clearing had to occur, um, and all of that was in buffer zone. Took that, relocated it up, and filled out that field area there. Um, and so we've drastically minimized the amount of work, and you know, there, there was a little bit of tree clearing um, you know, along this edge, selective uh, tree pruning just to promote the maintenance road, access road, and also for solar access, but again, it was really just along the fringe of the, that tree line. Um, but most of the tree clearing that affected or that potentially could have affected wetlands. Have you submitted those plans? Is that this plan here or has that just been submitted to DEP? That has been just submitted to DEP and I have a copy of it with me. So I can leave this plan with you. Um, but Mark uh, Stinson did review it and I spoke with him after we, you know, after he looked at this. Okay, so this, this file number was issued after you two talked yes. about this? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So. Um, in terms of stormwater, uh, the the one thing that was being proposed because the majority of this clearing was going from um, forest cover to meadow, which curve number wise is is more substantial than you know what we're doing here, which is meadow to meadow. So this stormwater system that's shown here was really um, required because of the clearing that was going on in there. Um, and you know, rather knowing that we couldn't do stormwater um, attenuation over this section of the, of the buffer zone, this you know, we made up for it here and we're proposing this. So, with this change, we're showing this system, um, you know, as a belt and suspenders, but it really came down to the 30,000 some odd square feet of, of woodlands that we were previously shown to, to remove, which we don't need to now. 
So, um, you know, we're, we're, you know, minimizing the amount of, of, uh, of, of runoff that's coming off the site. And in terms of the, the resource areas, the other piece that, um, so this was labeled as bordering vegetated wetlands. It's a 20,000 square foot isolated wetland, recognizing that DEP doesn't regulate isolated wetlands. Right. The buffer zone, therefore, really is 100 feet off of this wetland line. So, you know, the buffer zone is really over here. In talking to Mark, <clears throat> We went over the isolated versus yep. bordering, and he didn't feel that that isolated was jurisdictional. Right. So that's where I was headed with it. So in terms of the Mass Law, which doesn't regulate Mass DEP, doesn't regulate isolated wetlands. Only the Army Corps of Engineers do. So there is no buffer zone associated with this wetland system. As soon as we touch it and do work in it, then we have to go through the U.S. Army Corps. You know. Uh, 401 clean water certificate, all of that. So obviously the goal is not to touch that. But there is no jurisdictional area between the, outs the, the edge of that and, you know, 100 feet or mm -hmm. whoever. So, you know, the buffer zone is really out here. Therefore, the only part of the project that, you know, even gets close to the buffer zone is, is over here and this piece over there. The rest which, of it's completely out of which as, we don't really need. Which, as Jeff mentioned, this is more robust based on yep. the tree clearing. Right. Which we, we're, we're hoping that we could really tone that down right. quite a bit. So ideally, what we'd propose <laughs> is keep everything as far away from the wetland, possibly even out of the buffer zone completely, and not have to do the stormwater system. Because, you know, again, the appeal to this site was really because there was minimal work that was needed to do this. Yeah, Louie and I went up there this afternoon, mm -hmm. took a drive by. <clears throat> you know, the other comment that DEP made was test pits or soil data for this stormwater system. Um, you know, again, we'd ideally not like to have to do that just because of the extra disturbance. But um, the other point was that we're not using this for detention. It's not, you know, we need the soil data if we were saying we we're infiltrating, you know, a certain amount of water, but all we're doing is slowing it down because mm -hmm. of, you know, the higher rate of runoff, so. Well, it's been sheet feeding off there anyways. Right. Exactly, exactly. Now, what we've done, one of the things when we just did that yep. other solar is that we looked at those panels as almost like impermeable surface, mm -hmm. if you're getting an X, amount of runoff for those. Sure. What are you planning on doing to mitigate any channeling or? Well, the, you know, right now, um, I mean, it's, it's all open field now, and w the, the goal is to minimize as little as possible. Um, what is disturbed will be restored to the same sort of meadow that's there now. I don't anticipate that there's going to be a high enough um, quantity of runoff coming off of these, given the topography of the site to end up in a situation where you're going to have channelized erosion. It's, it's all sheet flowing across that. But that's going to be coming like off field. of a roof and coming straight down. Off the, off the panels, right, yeah. at the, right at the base of them. Yeah, there may, I mean, there may be, you know, a, like, a, like a drip edge that, you know, but it's, it's all going to splash up and, and extend, you know, out into the... <clears throat> now, the Lake Street development, they, they have a particular grass. It's like a solar array grass. Right. It's like a, a low mow, basically um, a grass that, it's like a fescue, like it's a sheep fescue. fescue. Right. Yeah. And basically that's what we would use, same standard. Specific. Is that in the new notice of intent? Uh, no, we didn't specify, yeah, a seed mix, but I, we certainly can. That's fine. Yeah. Yep. What about when the ground's frozen? Now that's going to change it a little bit with the runoff on the panels. Now that you know, it's not being absorbed at all. Right. So, have you even thought about that? Where you know, is there areas that is potential for uh, you know runoff, like erosion type? I think where it's all it's, coming together. You know, it's right. Well, I think the way that this is graded now with this detention basin is everything's sort of coming right. to this area, and then this creates a holding area. Um, it's such a it, because it's a, going to be a non-disturbed site, different from a disturbed site. Um, 
I wouldn't anticipate right. anything. If there's anything specific that we no, I mean, know. I don't know if there was something you if you looked at it, you know. I, I don't in general, know. the contours, you know, run, run, you know, in this direction down to the, yeah. you know, so they sort of, and they're, you know, they're very evenly, you know, spaced out. It's, it's a very, you know, consistent like grid. Yeah. Right. So, then, you know, given the small size of this array, we don't anticipate that there's going to be such a high velocity and quantity of, of stormwater coming off those panels that's going to result in a, you know, a channelized, you know, uh, uh, you know erosion pattern. Um, you know, given the topography, most of it should just convert back to sheet flow. And yeah, when it's frozen, there may be a large sheet of, but it's no different than what, what's going on out there now. <clears throat> um, what is your time frame? We'd like to be um, breaking ground when the ground thaws. Well, that's now basically. <laughs> we break in, ground in, usually. in a typical year, right. uh, late March. <laughs> Well, typically, we have taken projects like this and we send them out for peer review because they, they're a little bit beyond our pay grade in a lot of respects. Um, what is the flavor of the board on that? I wouldn't have any objection to. Yeah. Because you're saying this isn't 100% yet. You're saying it might change where the retention pond is, you're saying. It, it, well, could, it could possibly. I mean, the, okay, so, so it's not, nothing's really 100% right. The, the, the option, I mean, ideally, this, this area, now knowing what we know about this wetland, this isolated wetland system, you know, we could, we could feasibly take everything out beyond the 100-foot buffer zone, and you wouldn't even need to know about it, which is, you know, yeah. it's... It's an option. We were pretty ecstatic that once we found out that Jingle Hill, that Jingle Hill we, we didn't have to conform to the 100-foot setback. That You're we could, welcome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that we could actually use the field. Because when we first went out there, and as you were out there today, we said, oh, this is ideal. It's, you know, nice, evenly sloped field. We don't want to have, we don't want to disturb trees. We really don't want to have to um, disturb the land over here as well if we don't need to. So if anything, the project has become a lot simpler than the page prior. Mm -hmm. And there's really, um, it's, it's only, it's less than 600 kilowatts. So scaled to the size of what, what you've been looking at. It's, it's, it's really sort of small. But um, w our hope is, as this is not the final revision, that it's even it's getting simpler and simpler. And like Jeff said, if we even have to, we'd be fine with moving some of this out of the way. Now that we could use the whole field, the only reason we were stretching this down prior was because we couldn't use the field, and we were trying to get a certain amount of um, production for what we're consuming. And then you're going to run it down Mud Mile. You got an underground trench. To connect to your other solar array, yes, and then into the campus, on the campus, yeah, right. which is right off the of right. The other solar array is right off of Rice's Ferry, out by the pool there. Right. Yeah, cool, right? Yep. Now, so, I did read the narrative, and there are no issues on Mud Road, no Mud Mile, no. Stockman Associates walked the entire. Thing up and back and said, "There's no, there's nothing there that's." But with the name like Bud Mile, I know. You I, I, well, that's I, that's the first thing I thought of. <clears throat> yeah. And she said, "There's, you know, there's some places where there's some ruts where you know, there's some water sitting, but it's not. It wasn't. It wasn't classified as well. No hydric soils, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. But what about? Um, I give Greg Newman a call. He did that last solar array for us." And see what his availability is. And he did a. He comes very highly recommended by DEP. Yep. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't take long at all on it, something like this. This is it a just, much smaller project than the right. Lake Street project. Right. So. So I'm going to make a motion that we send this project out for independent review. I'll contact Greg Newman tomorrow morning and see. And if we can, I'll have you. I'll, yeah, if we can touch base because I can explain to him. Yeah, no. what you know, because if, if pulling everything out outside of the buffer zone solves you know all the problems that would be even better the yeah thing to do that would be the best thing to do save everybody save time everybody and time and money and effort yep mm -hmm. so second aye aye aye, aye. okay
So basically, there's a phone call going to be made. I will we'll be calling, the, and then I'll be the intricacies or. And yeah, they'll. They're professionals. They'll yeah. do peer review. Okay. They're good at this stuff. And we've yeah we've commonly talked to Greg on just some other to, projects and okay. just explain where we're at and yeah right and like and I said like he had done the peer review on the River Road uh, project and it was it worked out very well for everybody yeah. I think yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay great all right thanks gentlemen Perfect. thank you thank you thank all you. right. Who are your in-laws that work at Eagle Bay? Uh, TJ and Bobby Lowe. Oh, really? Yeah. They've been there for a long time. Yep. <laughs> Probably longer than you've been. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you. I'll call Greg tomorrow. Sounds good. Um, old business, the enforcement order down on River Road. Alec McLeod has finally got served and been in contact with Sergi and DEP. And we're going to try and schedule a meeting for midweek next week between Alec McLeod, the wetlands engineer, the owner. I'm going to try and get Kevin uh, from the highway department and any of you guys who might be around. I, I'll, I should know tomorrow or Monday what day we'll do it and then do a, a site visit up there. And I'd like Kevin Scarborough to be there because he can get out the cones and all that. and make it safe for us to be on, yeah. on that corner. <laughs> yeah, maybe, just to slow things down. So it, it is moving ahead. Um, it has been kind of at a standstill, but Alec has uh, been out there now, and he's, it looks like it's going to be, we should be moving ahead. So I just wanted to keep everybody, he's not ignoring it, nobody's ignoring it. It's just sort of one of those things that's been slow to, because of Alec's schedule. But we're moving right along on it. So we'll cross that off. And let's see. We've got a couple of other things to do here. The minutes of last month's meeting for review. Ben. <coughs> oh, Minutes look pretty good to me. Second. Aye. 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 Well, we'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Accept it. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Someday we'll get these right. Good Aye. to go. I will just cut my Let's see. And we've got a little bit of mail here. Let's see. Uh, we have a request to release the balance of Lake Street's money to them from Greg Newman's um, work. There's a balance of, to be forwarded back to them. So I'm going to authorize that tomorrow. We have a request for comments uh, from the Zoning Board of Appeals, Atlantic Furniture Incorporated, 5 Industrial Drive West, South Deerfield, Mass., the special permit for use of lot 183-10 for wholesale warehouse or distribution. Um, they would like us just to comment. Do we have any comments? It's at the Industrial Park West. Um, it's what the Industrial Park was designed for, pretty much. So I've got nothing to add to it. Ben? Official comment is no comment. Official comment is no, no comment. comment. No comment. I like that though. Official? The official comment. All right. 
We have our fiscal 17 budget that um, postage $150, publications and advertising $100, dues 250 for a grand total of $500. Does that sound good? And if we need more, we have money in, our, in the CONCOM account that is available if we were to That's need it. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much where we've been. And so, actually, it's a little bit less. We've, we've had a budget of last year was $800. The year before was 500 We expended 349 So... Why can't all government agencies be like that? What's that? Why can't all government agencies be like that? Because not all, all government agencies are volunteers. <laughs> so, so I would vote, vote that we make a motion we accept the budget as presented. No second. Aye. 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 Okay. Um, we have a letter from the Mass Association of Conservation Commissions. Uh, the annual conference is March 5th, 2016 at the College of the Holy Cross in Worcester. If anybody's willing to go, the letter is here. We have a timber cutting plan from Don Scott lately. We have this forest cutting plan certificate and another forest cutting plan submitted by Russ Missoula. Off Matthews Road, Grandview Drive. So. Our February date will be the uh, 25th. I think that is, unless there's something I'm missing. Get everything checked off my list. I think that's pretty much what we have. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. 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 We're done, Lacey. Aye.